This used to be a carriage house. Carriage house for the horse and buggy? And actually, this was a working farm. Uh, right here in the middle of this big open space, there mm -hmm. was an ice house. And that was where they, when they got done milking the cattle, they put the milk in there until it was time for the milk truck to come by and pick it up. Wow. That's actually a really cool old barn. I wonder when it was built. Now, if you're into history, maybe you can date it better than I can. Uh, uh, take a run in it. Okay. We'll start down here. This rack right here and that lower rack right there are all IndyCar wheels. Really? That we have left there. Wow. In various states. Anyone want old IndyCar wheels? Oh, I just sold a bunch of them. Really? Yeah. Maybe you can see like that one there's got a broken I see that. piece on it. But that's you know, where guys, Ziggy Snyder clobbered the wall. Could have been. <laughs> but you know, you can, they're mag, you can weld them, you yeah. can machine them. Yeah. And guys are looking for these things. So. I hear, oh, I'm sure they are. Well, so, how many times have you won the USAC championship, do you know? Uh, 13. 13 national sprint car championships? 12 of, 12 of them with me as chief mechanic. Wow. Brady won again last year. Uh, I took the time last year to gather all of our IndyCar stuff. Mm -hmm. from all the nooks and crannies it was in and put it on these shelves because I'm trying to sell it. Kind of got it all in one place so yeah, you know so, where it is. So I know what I have and where it is. I mean, we've got old Offy IndyCar blocks sitting down here. Wow. Um, Off, Offenhauser IndyCar blocks? Mm -hmm. Now there's got to be someone looking for those. Actually, I had like four of them and three cases and I sold all those to a guy. He's already got one of the engines assembled and, and wow. uh, running. Whoa, 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 Offenhauser stuff. I got fuel injection, I got magnetos, I got suspension parts, most of those are for Eagles. Over here, there's a Cosworth DFX, complete. A Cosworth motor? Cosworth. I haven't it's heard got, that in a while. It's got mag, it's got injection, it's got clutches, everything. And it, it has no race time on it, it came off the dyno. Wow, I mean, what are you going to do with it? It's for sale. Everything's for sale. Here. So this is a 1928, I think, or 29 Buick. The year you guys were born. If it's 29. Could be. Uh, I was with my grandfather. When the was team a, was born. He I mean. loved old cars. And he loved auctions. That's how we got the farm. He went to an auction. But uh, I was with him when he bought this car. And it was out in a farmer's field. And we brought it here. And we did the restoration here. You look right there on the... Wow! That is so cool. Uh, it actually belongs to my uncle. Okay. He, when my grandfather died, we had an auction because we had literally every outbuilding here was stuffed with old cars. And we auctioned off the vast majority of them, but each person kind of had their own favorite. Yeah. And this was my uncle's favorite, so he bought it out of the auction. Got it. I got a 50... 51... DeSoto with a fire dome V8 in it. Where's that at? It's in another outbuilding. Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's not that car that your first sprint this car went at Winch. Oh, that's a midget. This is a midget. Because that first sprint car went at Salem you showed me, that was a that was a seven. Obviously they were painted the same, but Okay. This is a midget that uh, we owned back in the day. 48 Curtis Craft. My grandfather bought it in 51, I believe. 51. And uh Gosh. It, it has a lot of history behind it. Oh. oh. Um, if you look at the drivers on here, Troy Rutman, Mike oh. Nazareth, Andy Linden. Wow. Eddie Sachs. Oh, that's so cool. Jordy Templeman. I mean. Troy Rutman, still the youngest driver to ever win the Indy 500. And my grandfather. Uh, 22. We, when we got the restoration done, we took it to Winchester. We were racing there, but it was old timers weekend. So they were displaying cars and running them on the track. And I got to run laps on the uh, track in this car. It's a 110 offy. It is an offy? Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. And we put it back to the condition it was in. I must touch the offenhauser. <laughs> <It's, laughs> I am one with the offy. It is back in the condition it was in gosh. when we ran it back in the day. And the, When's the last time you fired it up? Uh, it's been a while. Man, honestly. what I wouldn't give to hear an Offenhauser run. That is I've one been... of my things that I want to do this year is, this year 2022, is get this thing running again. Oh, man, if you do, can I come hear it? Oh, absolutely. I'm serious. I, well, I'm I've, been, I've been begging people who have offies, can I hear it run? And I haven't been successful. When I drove this thing at Winchester, 
I gained a whole new respect for these guys that uh, were doing this back in the day. Because and when you're going down the straightaway, you're having to pump the fuel, fuel pump, fuel pump, mechanical fuel pump. Yep. It's well, right it's there. air. Okay. It's air and it pressurizes the tank and forces you. the stuff up. Handbrake. And then grab the handbrake getting into the corner. No power steering. No power steering. Skinny hard tires. Yep. Can you even imagine that they did this? I have a hard time fathoming. And they were hauling ass back then, too. Oh, yeah. I mean, you think like they were just putting around. No, negative. No no cage. N not even a roll bar. No, that's no power we lost steering. So many of these guys. Oh, oh, my God. I don't know why they did it. I can, I, I just. Well, you know, a lot of them were coming out of World War II. They saw a lot scarier stuff than this. Racing a car was nothing for those guys. Exactly. Yeah. This that's is, a this showpiece. This is the car there. that caused my dad to fall in love with auto racing. He always had this story to tell that. You know, he was always pestering his father to take him to the races, and mm -hmm. he'd say, well, you, you polish up those wheels, or you clean off that oil pan, or the uh, belly pans, and maybe I'll take you to the next race, and he <laughs> never got to go. God. So he uh, conspired with his brother when he was about 12, and they uh, got down in the cockpit, and they had cockpit covers that um, would go over the cockpit, cover them from the rain and everything, the elements, while you were towing the car to the racetrack on the open trailer. He got down in there and his brother snapped the little locks in around that thing. And he waited until he felt like they were far enough away and got to a stop sign. And he popped up out of there, went running up to the car that was towing it. And he goes, ha, now you have to take me. <laughs> My grandfather don't know. He goes, boy, walk home. <laughs> and he made him walk like three or four miles Are home. you serious? Yes. Boy, so, yeah, that's back when lessons were learned. You, you didn't mess with my grandfather. No, I, I, I can only imagine. I believe you. And so over here is our homemade paint booth. This is another uncle's car that uh, his father bought new back in the 70s, and he's finishing up his restoration on it here. What year is that? It's an early 70. I'm not sure. Stingray. Yeah. Wow, man. He said we're going upstairs to see history. We're going upstairs. To see Wasn't history. I? Haven't I been looking at history? Well, <laughs> yeah, but history is everywhere here. Oh my I mean, God. when you've been doing this for ninety plus years, I know. So... Should we be alerting the American pickers? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's. I feel problem. like I beat them to the punch on this one. I'm one of those guys. I don't like to part with a whole lot of this stuff. I'd never part with that. Mission. I know, but I mean, how oh. long can we keep saving things? We have to. Oh. And that's what I said, you know, I wanted to put the, uh, all the IndyCar stuff, I put it over here and I sold a lot of that stuff off because I want to see it back out there running. Yeah, sure. And I, sure. I don't want to see somebody that's going to buy it and hoard it. Ooh, I want somebody to... There's the oh, shirt. Here we go. You must have worn yours, so... Oh the my shirt gosh. of many names. Those are all the drivers at Hoffman Auto Racing? Mm-hmm. My God. Mm. Look at that. Ah, I'm very proud of that one right there. Ricky Hood? No. Oh, Rob Hoffman. <laughs> <laughs> I actually drove a couple of USAC races for us. Did you really? We had a father-son here, Jim Hines and Tracy Hines. Look at that list. And Dick Rathman. Oh, yeah. Eddie Sachs, Levi Jones, Dick Gaines. Yep. Wow. Ed Elysian. A lot of people didn't like him. Well, on uh, Dick Gaines, I think that's Dickie Gaines. Oh. Dickie, yeah. Dickie. Oh, it's Dick and Dickie. Dick, I'm sorry. Another. Yeah. Alan, Alan Barr. Mm -hmm. He's in the industry and he wanted some place to call his own, so he refinished this place up here, and this was his office. It is this was your grandfather's office? This was my grandfather's office after he retired. Look at this old hardwood floor. Yep. Is this that old carriage building we're in you were mm -hmm. telling me about? Now, there's your Larry Boom Boom Canning oh. Crush. Oh my God, yeah. And it, they're in order. Larry Boom Boom Can and Turn One at Winchester. It started at the flag stand. I don't doubt it. I remember that. it like it's yesterday. I was there. I was there too. I was there. And it was like 1971 to... It was 71, yeah. Okay, I was there. I remember when it happened, how quiet it got. Uh -huh. Like, oh my God. It just like, you could hear the pin drop, you know? Uh, yeah. yeah, look, it kind of just tore it in two. Yep. Would you believe we raced that car the next weekend? Are you kidding me? No. Nope. What do you mean you raced that car the next week? We raced it at New Bremen the next weekend. How could they you? They started working on it on Tuesday. They were having a wake for the car. 
And the one guy, that, for the, car. the one guy that uh, was up here, he was a master welder at GE Aircraft Engines, and he did a little welding on it. He goes, I think we can fix this thing. And sure enough, they, they started in on it, and they worked pretty much around the clock. They spray painted the frame, and they had a sandwich, and then started assembling it. There were still fingerprints in the frame. God. Trophies. There's a lot of trophies there's here. There's a lot of trophies, but there's a lot of trophies that aren't there either. Yeah, there I are. mean, you, they're sitting in... Uh, living rooms and and this is your grandfather Gus's office. Yes. After he retired. After he retired. So cool. Yeah. Andy Hillenberg at Lawrenceburg. Uh, Indiana Andy. Indiana Andy. This is the qualifying picture from '84, and I believe that I'm the youngest chief mechanic in Indianapolis 500 history. I was 20 years old and got a car. Who is it? Spike Gilhausen. Spike, is he still alive? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I'm telling That's you, cool. we got a lot of cool people here. Yeah. That is Tim Richmond. Really? That was his first IndyCar ride. In the Hoffman? In the Hoffman car at Michigan. This is my grandfather, Mud Anderson, maybe at Winchester with the 98 car he was campaigning. This is in Mutt's shop up in Xenia. Xenia. And again, my grandfather, that'd be my father. He's about the little kid. Yep, he's about fourteen. Wow, that is an ice box. That's an ice box. That's an ice box. Yeah. Store your ice in there. No, uh, apparently we're storing other things. In yeah, there now, you got some. Yeah, you, USAC Media Guides. Yep. You put your wow. ice up here, and then you put your stuff down here to keep it cool. And Nineteen twenty-six refrigerator. That is exactly what that is, and that right there is the tongs that they would use to haul the blocks of ice up to you. All these woodworking tools up here, mm -hmm. a lot of them uh, belong to my great-grandfather, who was a steamer trunk maker. What's a, what'd you call that, a ste uh, steamer trunk maker? What is that? Okay, when you would take a trip on like a, a steamer, Yep. they would have trunks instead of suitcases. Uh-huh. And that's what he did. He and made, he made those? Yeah. That's interesting. But he was a woodworker. You know, the the fifties we had the ninety eight junior and it was a great sprint car ride. That you bought from JC Agajanian? Yes. And my uh grandfather said he got a call from this guy named AJ Foyt, wanted to come up here and drive the car for him. And he talked to his mechanic, Mud Anderson, he said, Mutt, what do you think about this AJ Foyt guy? You think we ought to hire him? He said, ah, he's going to be good, but I don't think he's quite ready for us yet. He teamed up with Watson and won the championship. <laughs> Apparently, so he turned down AJ Foy. <laughs> <laughs> one of the few, one of the few. Yeah. Okay, we'll go next door here now. Look at that old barn door. Well, and what we do... Uh, Watch my step. I got it. So, again, my grandfather loved old cars. 53 Studebaker. That's a 53 Studebaker? Yep. And I wanted this car desperately in the auction. And I was bidding on it. I didn't have a whole lot of money. And then some guy on the other side of the crowd was bidding on it. And I'm going back and forth. And I reached my level of pain. I couldn't go any higher. Turns out it was my uncle. Really? Yeah. He said, well, if I'd known that you wanted it, I wouldn't have bid on it. Uh, this is a 32B model Ford. 32B model Ford. B model Ford. Uh, why it's important to us or whatever. My uncle owns it, the same one that owns the Studebaker, owns this. Yeah. But this was my dad's first car. He drove it to high school. Are you serious? Well, if you look on the back, it says McNicholas Rockets. And that was the high school he went to here in town. <laughs> You've got to be kidding me. This is a 32? 32B model. And that was his first high school car. First high school car. He can get his girl in there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Got the mohair interior. Heck, yeah. Then we got a 61 Jaguar. That's a Jag? That's a Jag. What do we got here? You ever remember the commercial? Do you have yeah, Grey Poupon? Yeah, of course. Got the two guys are sitting in the back, but, you know, there's your fold-down tray so you can have your Grey Poupon on your sandwich. God. A Jag. Yep. What year? 61? 61. Wow. This 
That is the 1912 Mets. Lots of cool things. Obviously a two-seater. My grandfather told me they called this the mother-in-law seat. <laughs> and it was for uh, chaperoning when the two people went out on a date. But No thanks on that one. <laughs> they conveniently located her right behind the gas tank. I like that. And then there's your trunk. As you move this back and forth, this moves across that disc. So the further out you go, the higher the gear that you're running. And when you go cross center, it's reverse. Really? Ingenious. Wow. And it had a differential rear axle in it. And chain driven? And chain driven. There's two chains, one two on each chains. side, and there's a differential. So it turns corners very well. This is in 1912. Why, why did this Mets thing go away why didn't they Who know they, you know if you get a guy that's running a company and makes a bad business decision it goes away but there are so many cool things on this car from 1912 that we're sitting there thinking oh yeah this has been around since the 50s or 60s no it was around in 1912 1912 that's like the year i think the titanic went down <laughs> 1912 well, and then that old cadillac over there that's a car that my grandfather bought new in 1968 wow and it was an everyday driver for him I remember making many a trips in that car. I remember going As to a little kid. mountains in that car. There's some memories. Yeah. You spent some time in that back seat. I did. <laughs> My brother and I. That's cool. And then this is the first car that I ever designed and built. And this was the Buick V6. That's a pavement car. That's a pavement car. Yep, yep. That's the Buick V6 at uh, Rich Vogler. And I really <sighs> did well. And this was what led to our first championship. It's just kind of neat to see his name on the side of a race car. Well, and this one, though, I believe it's set with Rich Vogler in 1989. We set 13 fast times and 11 new track records with this car. Won four times. And wow. you built and designed the chassis. Oh, yeah. Well, It's not a down-tube car either, is it? It's a mid-tube car. There are actually tubes right here. Okay, right I got gotcha. you. When we first built the car... The Buick V6 is a super wide engine, so I had to build the frame wide to get it to go down between the tubes. And my dad's complaining about that, and then I started looking, I went, you know what? I moved the seat and the steering wheel and the fuel tank all over to the left on the car, because we had so much room. And it just said in the rule book, the driver has to straddle the drive line. It didn't say he had to be centered up on it. So Rich kind of had his foot over there, out there on the right side, uh, getting that throttle pedal, but uh, we brought that out. It caused all kinds of protests, and USAC was worried that it was going to hurt their car counts, so uh, we ended up having to move everything back on center in July. And it wasn't until we moved everything back on center that we started winning races. <laughs> really? <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks, USAC. Yeah, yeah. Was this like the first offset car? No, it wasn't off. It wasn't that offset. The engine okay. was on the center line. It said in the rule okay. book the engine had to be on the center line, but it didn't say anything about the driver, the steering, or the fuel tank. Hmm. And probably some of my proudest achievements was when I caused USAC to have to change the rule book because <laughs> I did something nope. that you know they wanted to outlaw. And uh, that's a source of pride there. At, at one of the <laughs> points in time, it was Danny Drynan and I that were the biggest pains for USAC because they were writing rules against us continuously. Bragging rights. But it was bragging <laughs> rights. Was, that's why I admire that guy so much. Yeah. Very creative. Dan Drynan. Yeah. He is super sharp, isn't he? Yeah. Incredible. Yeah, you were talking about the barn. There you go. We're in a barn, Notch, aren't we? Notch and peg construction. Wow. God, I wonder how far back it goes. To the boneyard. The boneyard? The boneyard. And lest you think that that's all the crashes we've had. <laughs> oh, there's there's a couple more? You've had some, oh. That's all crash, <laughs> crash chassis. That's, crash, that's crash, crash. The boneyard. The boneyard. Wow. Hand-hewn beams. Yep. You can see it hate to be that guy that had to chop that thing <laughs> i gotta square. look up here real quick oh, yeah. if i could just watch your step i am get up here at the top because this floor is not that good i i believe you and uh look at this you should have been here about uh five or six months ago 
This entire area was filled up with sprint car wheels from the 70s. And you cleaned it all out. I sold them all. Oh, God, it's so cool. But we played in here in kid, as kids. I'll bet you did. Look at this. Yeah, and back in the day, you know, when I was a kid, all this stuff, it was all hay in here. This was the hayloft. And I spent many a summer um, throwing hay up here. That's why farm boys are so big. <laughs>